Hi everyone, welcome to Understand Heart, where we learn about anything and everything heart related. This is part of a new series where we review some useful medical apps that I use and judge its utility according to how easy it is to use, its functionality, credibility and design. To start off, I will be sharing the app which I use the most frequently as it is really useful to support me during my clinical training, the ESE Pocket Guidelines. So the ESC Pocket Guidelines is made by the European Society of Cardiology with its first version published in 2013. It is available on both Android and iOS and is last updated on February 2021. The app is free to use but you will need to create an account to log in before being able to make use of the guidelines. For me, the app is a really convenient tool as it helps me refresh my memories on different conditions which I don't normally encounter during my clinic sessions or when I'm on call. There are four main settings where this app is really useful. Firstly, it's during clinics as it gives me the opportunity to refresh myself on the newest guideline before I see the patient so I could provide the patient with the most evidence-based treatment. The second scenario is during inpatient, especially during on calls, as it is useful for acute treatment of some conditions such as SVT and PEs. However, most of this treatment algorithm may be present in your own hospital's protocols, but the guidelines provide a more evidence-based rationale behind each treatment options and potentially allows some alternatives in the event of different clinical scenarios where the guidelines or protocols does not cover. Thirdly, it is really useful when I'm writing up my papers as it is a convenient way to do fact checking during my literature research. Lastly, it is useful when you're doing some revision, potentially for interviews as it is sometimes difficult to revise in the clinical setting. So how do we use it? You will first need to download it through the App Store on your phone by searching for ESC Pocket Guidelines. Once you have downloaded the app, you will have access to all the published ESC guidelines after making an account. You can select all and download them or just choose the ones which you require to save some storage space on your phone. In the Pocket Guidelines page, you can rearrange the guidelines to your own preference. One example is that you can put the ones which you use most frequently at the top row. With each guidelines, there will be different useful sections. You can read the full guidelines with a content page available for quick navigation. There are also some interactive tools which lets you access parts of the guidelines such as the calculation of the charts to VAST score. Another useful feature within the app is the ability to make notes within each section. This is quite useful when you are writing a paper and want to note down another reference which you may be using in the future. Yeah. There are of course many pros and cons when it comes to using the app. One of the few advantages that I find is that the information is always up to date and it is definitely a reliable source as it is an official European Society of Cardiology Guideline app. Another useful bit is that the information can be downloaded onto your phone and it can be used offline so in areas where reception may not be as good, you can still access the guidelines. Some of the disadvantages of the app is that due to the large amount of information in the app, it can take quite some time to download the guidelines at the start. The difficulty to differentiate between different guidelines at the front page can sometimes make it a little bit difficult to try and jump straight into the guideline you want. Thirdly, the navigation using the content page can be a little laggy sometimes. And lastly, if phone screen is small like mine, some of the images might not be as suitable for it. Some final thoughts about the app. Firstly, regarding the ease of use, where I look into the accessibility, navigation and efficiency of the app, 
and I give it a 5 out of 10 mostly due to it not being fully optimized for a smaller screen and a little slow to react sometimes secondly regarding the functionality it certainly does what it says on the tin and therefore it's an 8 out of 10 thirdly regarding the information on the app it is definitely very up to date and it's regularly updated almost monthly therefore it scores a 9 out of 10 in this aspect the fourth which is credibility of course it will be a 10 out of 10 as it is provided by an official guideline society lastly the visual design is 6 out of 10 as I find it difficult to differentiate between the guidelines at first glance and we'll need to look at the headings before I know which guideline I'm going into some suggestions for improvement that I have would be to make it easier to differentiate between the guidelines apart from just different colors maybe using a different icon may make the navigation a lot easier secondly improving images for use on smaller screens will be also quite useful for people like me who have small phone screens lastly enabling auto update of the guidelines which can happen in the background will be quite useful as the requirements for manual updating every time I enter the app can be annoying when I'm trying to access the app quickly. Hopefully this video will be useful to you. If there are any other apps which you would like us to review, please comment below. We will try and do a review whenever we get the chance to. If you find this useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to help us continue making videos like this. Thank you for joining us.